Hi everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to PackageMain, the channel about backend development, Go, Cloud, DevOps and other similar topics. In today's episode we are going to talk about container registries and try to self-host one. And don't forget we have a Substack newsletter, also called PackageMain with .tech, where we also write articles about similar topics and subjects. Cool. But before we start talking about container registries, let's quickly remind ourselves what a container image is. And in a nutshell, a container image is a specific package that holds all the libraries, binaries, dependencies to run a container. And these images uh, are composed of layers, where each layer represents a set of system file changes that add or modify files. And the most common and easiest way to create an image is to use a docker file and run docker build command. I prepared a very simple application that will package in a container. So it doesn't do much as you can see here. We have a docker file that, uh, that has two stages. It builds the application and then just kind of runs the, the binary for us. Now in our terminal, we can run a docker build command to build the image. With minus t, we, we name our image. So let's do kind of my last name, hello world, and then give it a tag v0. And context is current directory. Okay, and now we can use the command docker images to list the images that we have locally. And we can see our image here. That's all good. The image exists locally, but what if you want to share it with other people, right? Or let's say deploy it to a different environment, to a different machine. And that's where the container registries come in. A container registry is a storage catalog where you can push and pull your container images from. And these images are usually grouped into repositories. So if you go to Docker Hub, which is quite popular, obviously, container registry, and we go to Nginx page. In this case, Nginx is a repository and it contains all the images with all the versions for this name Nginx. Um, there are obviously uh, public container registries uh, such as Docker Hub, meaning that people can easily access images from the internet, they are public, which is really great for open source projects, but there are also private re container registries as well. A private registry could be hosted in cloud or on-premise. Um, there is a growing list of solutions available, for example, Google Cloud, Artifact Registry, GitHub has now GitHub packages, where you can also host container images. AWS has its own. Um, and also a Docker Hub has actually a private repositories feature. Okay, and as a developer, you usually interact with container registries when you're using commands such as docker pull or docker push. So since we have the image locally, let's try to push it to Docker Hub. You can use docker push. Um, what's it, what it is, docker.io, that's the command, right? And go. Great, we pushed our image to Docker Hub. And actually in this case, you can omit the docker.io part because Docker Hub is a default container registry, so you can just do something like that and it will also work. Okay, let's look at the anatomy of a container image URL. And we can use this example, right? So in this case, the docker.io 
as we already know, it's a, it's a identifier of the registry or its domain name, right? You've probably seen things like uh, what in GitHub is ghcr.io, for example, or I think Google has gce or gcr something dot eu for example or depending on, on the location next we have the repository name and usually so in our case it's pluto slash hello world um, usually it's kind of username slash repository name or organization name slash repository name uh, it could be different per container registry then we have a colon and a tag name uh, you probably as seen, usually images have a tag latest, right? Now, in our example, we decided to use V0. Um, when you pull the images, though, you can also specify the digest part, which is which goes at add uh, SHA-256, and colon, and then uh, the hash, right? So digest is, is an immutable identifier of the image, right? So consider it, it as a commit uh, SHA in GitHub, so uh, think that is unique for the image. But sometimes instead of relying on external vendors like AWS or GCP, you might want to self-host your container registry. That makes your infrastructure internal, giving you the freedom of configuring your registry the way you want, um, giving access differently, etc. Um, and in some cases, that could be a requirement for your system as well, because, I don't know, maybe it's a heavily regulated environment, so things like that could happen. Um, but be aware that maintaining kind of and hosting your container re registry comes with the cost of uh, securing it properly, right? maintaining, uh, patching, and etc. And it's not necessarily hard to host your or self-host your container registry. Um, I mean the bare bone configuration. You could use something like registry, which is a Docker official image. It even says here, uh, meaning that you can run your registry as a container itself. Uh, there are other open source al alternatives that I'll mention later, but um, in this video we are going to kind of see how can we yeah, self-host one with, by using this registry image. So the basic steps to run a container registry for us would be to prepare a server, and it could be any server that supports Docker and Nginx as well. Um, for this example, uh, I already have uh, my uh, Google Cloud instance with Ubuntu on it. You can use, I don't know, DigitalOcean Droplet with Ubuntu or just any VM. Next, we need to run this registry container. We will also run Nginx and proxy or, and forward the requests from uh, Nginx to the registry container. Uh, we also use Nginx to set up the SSL certificates properly because container registries require that. Um, yeah, and then we'll glue all together using the Docker Compose and see how it works. Cool, I'm already in my virtual machine and that has an Ubuntu, so we can, you can see what I have here. So just basic Ubuntu, uh, 4 gigabytes of memory, 2 gigahertz of CPU, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that we need Docker, Docker Compose, Nginx as well, though we won't install Nginx globally, we'll run it uh, as a container. Awesome, so let's start with Docker. So um, here I can use the snap um, install, I forgot, is it docker.io or just io? We'll see. Yeah, so just probably Docker. Yeah, let's just confirm our installation so it can run Docker version. Cool, we have Docker. Do we have Docker Compose as well? We do. All right, so I already prepared some Docker Compose configuration. I'll just copy it and put it on the server. We'll just do the registry part only for now. So let's create the file compose.yaml. 
in our home directory and let's just look at it right so um yeah it is this official docker hub image as we mentioned uh we're using the hd password uh, as a kind of means for authenticating our users uh, that's where we need to put a file so uh, later we will mount the, the the authentication file itself what we also need to do we also need to mount the directory where the images like the files itself will be stored so we can do it using the volumes in docker compose um, yeah and that's kind of the basic configuration for your docker registry um, before kind of running docker compose up let's make sure that we have a directory and we have this authentication file right so let's save this file so we'll create the kind of registry data folder for for saving the images that will be later mounted then we'll install the HD password uh, command which is part of Apache 2 utils cool and now we can run HD I think that's written like that password uh, is BBN then username let's say kind of BZB and then into what registry and registry password as I remember let's just confirm um, yeah so we'll mount the registry slash registry password file okay now let's run our registry container alone so we can do docker compose up oh and we have some permission denied all right let's let's just sudo it So it's pulling the registry image and yes yeah, so what we are looking for is this message kind of everything is okay and we are listening on the port 5000 okay so this part works let's stop it for now okay let's continue as i mentioned earlier we need nginx to to help us manage the ssl connections and forward the requests to the registry I already have this section in my compose.yaml template, so just put it on the server as well. Um, for that, we also need the Nginx configuration file um, and the ISO certificates. So the Docker registry, or the, sorry, the container reg registry requires us to have a proper SSL connections uh, and the certificates should be trusted. For this example, I already obtained um, the certificate using the assert bot uh, project um, that kind of automates the up, uh, obtaining of less encrypt uh, certificates and they work quite well for this example and engineers configuration can look something like that right so the important part is yeah to have your a server name here and uh, for my example it's registry dot uh, which I have access to this a subdomain important that it already needs to point to your um, kind of IP address of your instance um, then important is to provide the certificate and a key then uh, this line is quite important so imagine you're working with big images uh, you probably need to increase the, the body size of the request and the rest, we just proxy all the requests to our registry, which is defined as upstream here with our 5000 port, right? So yeah, let's just move everything to the server and continue there. So now let's save the Docker Compose file and uh, also, um, yeah, create our Nginx configuration. Nginx slash nginx.conf cool. So put our configuration here. Um, as I mentioned, the I already have the certificates in nginx, nginx source folder. So full chain of PAM and private key. 
Now I believe everything is in place to run our registry together with Nginx. So let's give it a try. Docker compose up. Yep, so it should be running. There are no errors here at least. Um, cool, so we can switch now to our client host, uh, which is my Mac machine. And we can, yeah, we can try to push the image to our registry. Uh, before doing that, though, we need to run the docker login command. So that's my subdomain that's already pointing to the instance, by the way, so should be all good. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, usually it asks for username and password. Uh, it does say that existing credentials, so it's probably they're already in the tool chain. So uh, you'll probably see username and then password, right? And in our case, they've been busy and B. Cool, so now let's build the image, um, but also kind of give it here uh, our registry name. So registry .com. Man, my last name is so hard to spell and pronounce. Uh, I struggle with it a lot in Germany here, but anyway, um, should be good. Let's build it. And and now we can, yeah, uh, docker push, exactly. So, yeah, that pushed the image to our um, self-hosted registry. Uh, yep, and we can go to our server now. Um, yeah, so Nginx has some logs, uh, which is which is great. Uh, that means the request is coming through. Uh, now let's stop it and Remember, we created this directory for the images to be saved in. So let's see what's there. So what was that registry data, right? Right, Docker registry v2. What's next? I guess it's repositories. Hello um, world. Add on. Turn next. So we can see the files are there. Uh, the repositories are being created. So everything seems to work quite well. Okay, our approach was quite hacky, right? We, and not hacky, just a simple. Uh, we used Docker Compose. Uh, we had this authentication file locally, which is not good practice. Um, but just saying that it's very easy to do the same and deploy your registry on Kubernetes, where you can have persistent volumes, uh, secrets, and etc. And you can have quite production grade uh, registry there. Also in the beginning, I mentioned that there are some uh, open source uh, uh, solutions to run the registry. Um, to mention one, for example, Harbor, uh, that's compatible with Kubernetes, uh, has kind of the security features and yeah, just more production grade than just our, um, you know, direct Docker Compose approach. So you can see something like that. Also, if you, have, if you want to have a UI for, you, for your registry, you know, as you go to Docker Hub, for example, you can see the list of images, tags, uh, which Docker files have been used. You can use something like, like Docker Registry UI. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the comments below. Um, yeah, so just some, something nice to see which images um, do you have and have some nice features and being able maybe to remove some images, etc. right? All right, and to summarize, uh, Self-hosted container registries um, give you the power and control um, over the way you deploy them, uh, the way you secure them. Obviously, it comes with responsibilities. Make sure that it's you know uh, the backups are there, it's secure enough, and all of that. Um, yeah. So um, whatever your reasons are to self-host registries, um, now you probably know that you can do it, and it's not that hard um, and you can, you know, it's it's computer, so you can learn the, how they work and, and do the same um, and deploy them on your servers if you ever need to. Um, yeah, I'll put the link to our GitHub repository where you can find all the Docker Compose configurations, Nginx config, and yeah, you can just copy and do the same uh, for experiments or for real registry, you know, now, self-hosting your things becomes more popular you know before everyone wanted to do 
everything on the cloud and now seems like people want to have control over um, their belongings and the materials and maybe the container images um, becoming this thing as well. Um, cool. Thanks a lot. I hope it was interesting and helpful and uh, see you later. Bye.